It was 1988, and ninjas were everywhere. The original Shinobi game had already hit arcades, but more ninjas were on the way with Ninja Gaiden and, soon after, Ninja Spirit. All three games were great, but Ninja Spirit would become the dark horse of the three in the West, due to it being only in arcades and eventually on the Turbo Graphics. The game would also get versions on other platforms, but the Turbo Graphics 16 version was by far the more popular and superior port. That worked out fine for me, because that was the only console I had at the time. I never quite beat it as a kid, but I definitely came back to it many times, since it was one of my favorite games on the console and wasn't as difficult as lots of other Turbo games were. Today, I can't help but still see it through that nostalgia lens. It's always been a comfort game for me. Given that, I think it's time I give it a proper review for my second episode of Turbo Tributes. Ninja Spirit is a pretty unique platforming action game and one of the more popular Turbo games today for enthusiasts and collectors, and for good reason. It's one of the better games on the system. Even after exploring the CD library and lots of PC Engine imports, Ninja Spirit has remained one of my favorite games for the system. You play Moonlight, a ninja whose father was inexplicably murdered by an evil ninja who now needs to die, as well as a ton of other enemies who are stupidly standing in your way. You'll be doing lots of jumping around and dispatching constant waves of enemies for pretty much every moment of the game. The basic pace of Ninja Spirit might remind you of something like Contra, as you inch through levels while constantly taking out enemies that are coming at you from all directions. Your katana, shurikens, bombs, and sickle are always available to you, and you can scroll through them with the select button at any time. Orange ninjas hold power-ups that you'll find pretty often throughout the game. Blinking ones will level those weapons up and make them more effective. Pink ones wipe out all the enemies on the screen. Yellow ones give you a protective ring of fire that damages enemies that touch it, but stops short of making you invincible and blue ones summon Moonlight's alter egos, or spirits. Power-ups are generally pretty common, so if you play your cards right, you should have most, if not all, of your weapons powered up and both of your spirits with you by the end of any given level. It's by no means an excuse to relax, but having leveled up weapons and both of your spirits can make you pretty formidable most of the time. So the trick is maintaining all of that for as long as possible as you progress through each level. You control Moonlight and his spirits all at once, so having all three characters active allows you to create walls of death with a katana or sickle, or pepper the entire screen with shurikens or bombs. You may find that some levels are easier if you primarily use certain weapons, but there's no hard and fast rules about that. You could theoretically get through any section with any weapon, so it really just comes down to your playstyle. And odds are you'll find a weapon or two for every level that works best for you. I personally tend to use shurikens in the more expansive levels, katanas in the tighter, more confined levels, and bombs for bosses. If you die, your spirits are lost and your upgrades are gone, so that can make later levels pretty tough. But again, power-ups are everywhere, so after a little bobbing and weaving, you should be back on your feet soon. Speaking of that, you always have Moonlight's insane jumping to help you evade enemies. Ninja Spirit has some of the craziest jumping you'll see in a game like this. You can basically leap the entire width or height of the screen, which is yet another cool little twist that Ninja Spirit brings to the table. Some levels seem to encourage leaping around with lots of vertical space and platforms to land on, but other levels are more confined and linear in their design, forcing you to focus more on precision and constant combat. That variety of Ninja Spirit's levels is one of the game's strongest qualities. It doesn't stick to any one layout type for too long before changing things up for the next one, and that keeps the game engaging all the way to the end, which you can probably get to within an hour or so if you're any good. The only stage I don't really like is the one that requires you to leap into a void of enemy ninjas and find this one arbitrary lane to stay in if you want to survive. Honestly, what the hell's up with that? The game does have two-player, although it's not simultaneous co-op, but it is there. It also lets you play the game in two different modes. Arcade, which is the one-hit death mode that stays true to the arcade, and PC Engine mode, which technically gives you five hits, but some of the bigger enemies and bosses will still kill you with one. 
If you want something else to tinker with before you dive into the game, you can also check out the sound test, which is something that a lot of Turbo games didn't have. Yet, Ninja Spirit has a really cool one that shows you all of the volumes for each sound channel of every track in real time as you listen to the tunes. It's not that big of a deal, I guess, but it's pretty cool. The only gripe I really have with the general gameplay is that the bosses are just entirely too easy. They often deal one-hit kills if they hit you, but with how easy it is to jump all over the screen and evade their attacks, it's not hard at all to create distance and then just barrage them with bombs or shurikens. And with how little health most of them seem to have, you can take them out with just a few seconds of uninterrupted attack, especially if you have both your spirits and weapons upgraded. As much as I like the bosses and I enjoy coming across them, most of them just feel surprisingly under-equipped to deal with you. The two sort of exceptions being the boss of level 2, who can also zoom all around the screen, and these moving death blocks that actually make you use your brain a little bit to avoid getting crushed, but even they aren't really what I would call challenging, they're just not complete pushovers. I still like how the bosses are designed, and I enjoy fighting them, but those fights are over so fast that they can feel a bit anticlimactic. Visually, the game is quite colorful, but also very somber and atmospheric, like a lot of games on the Turbo were. It uses the Turbo's color palette really well, especially for such an early title, with levels and characters that look distinct but also all look like they belong in the same game. Multi-layered scrolling is also present in most levels, which is, again, somewhat rare to see in an early release on the system. Enemies are nicely varied, with lots of easily dispatched grunts, bigger, more dangerous enemies that deal more damage and take more hits, and huge awesome bosses at the end of each level. The game does pay a price for these visuals with lots of slowdown and flickering though, and I couldn't give an honest review of this game without at least mentioning that. It does seem to bother some people, but honestly, I don't mind it most of the time. It's actually kind of useful at times because it gives my brain more time to process everything and react accordingly, but that's just me. The music to Ninja Spirit, if you haven't noticed already, is absolutely outstanding. It's some of the best music you'll hear on the system, and again, speaks to the development acumen of Irem at the time. Irem really knew their way around the Turbo sound chip, and it shows in this game maybe more than any other game they made for the system, at least the ones in Hue Card format. Most of the tracks are genuinely catchy, and they all nail that Sengoku-era vibe that all of the ninja games were going for at the time. Outside of maybe Shinobi 3, this is probably my favorite 16-bit ninja game soundtrack of all time. The sound effects themselves are perhaps almost as good as the music. Each weapon makes its own sound, and they all sound good, but don't make the mistake of overpowering the music like some games Gate of Thunder do. Explosions sound pretty good too especially when you defeat a boss, and it erupts into a cacophony of lo-fi nonsense. Your main character's death scream is also impressively clear. Overall, the sound package in this game is really impressive. I've got basically no complaints. Ninja Spirit is a game that does a fantastic job staying fun and engaging by utilizing the capabilities of the Turbo, and expertly avoids feeling repetitive. Multiple weapons, a good variety of level designs, and fun, unpredictable enemies all add up to a superb action game for its time, and one that holds up pretty well today. It also helps that it's not very long, so even my ADHD brain can easily stick with it to the end. The cherry on top is, of course, the game's phenomenal presentation with both visuals and audio. Audio. It is a bit of a shame that the cool-looking bosses are somewhat squandered by being too easy, and a notable handful of performance hiccups do hold it back from perfection. But it's hard to get too hung up on those things when the game does so much else so right. This is a game that has to be played by anybody interested in the Turbo's library or action platforming games in general. It's truly a unique and excellent example of both. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.